Hello everyone, welcome to 3 Minutes Engineering Concepts. The idea of this channel is to explain any engineering concept in mechanical engineering and material sciences in 3 minutes time. We will, I will try my best to explain any fundamental to advanced concept in these areas within 3 minutes time. So if you like the idea, please subscribe to our channel. Also, please share this channel and videos to your colleagues and students who can benefit from it. Thank you very much. In the, in the previous video, I introduced you to the equations of trust members. So trust members are 1D structures which have uh, a uniaxial load acting onto it in, one, in, in their axial direction as shown in this figure here. And I, then I introduced you to the fact that if a force is applied on one end of the trust member while it's fixed from the other end, then it will cause a displacement U in the member. And based on this U, I can define the kinematic equation which relates the strain with the displacements. I can define constitutive relationship based on Hooke's law and that relates the stresses with the strains. Again, it's a 1D case, so everything is in X direction. And then obviously based on the static or dynamic equilibrium coming from the basic laws of motion, then I can have these types of balance equations, whether it's dynamic case or without inertia, this means static case, which is at the bottom. The objective of most of the analysts is to solve the equilibrium equation, which are the bottom two equations on the slide, and find the solution of the field variable. For example, in this case, our field variable will be displacement. So we are trying to find a displacement based on the forces provided to us. So moving on from there, that today's this video is focused on five different concepts in a way. So the learning outcomes from this video would be strong and weak forms. I will introduce you to those. Hamilton's principle to construct weak forms of a strong form of equation. Kinetic energy of the problem domain. Potential energy, which in our case is tangential, elastic strain energy of the system. And lastly, the work done by the external forces. Whatever I'm going to introduce today is valid for any domain, whether it's a 1D, 2D, or 3D case. So we will start from there, and then we will develop our knowledge more on the trust members or trust elements in 1D cases. So starting from strong and weak forms. So the equation which I introduced you in one slide back were the strong form equations of the trust members. And these are derived, these are derived from the governing equations of solids or fundamental principles of physics. So those equations were the strong form of the equation. In reality, those are these are differential equations or partial differential equations. And in practical problems, it gets very difficult to solve those problems and to get an exact solution analytically. So the one approach is to construct a weak form of system of equations. And for that, you need to use some kind of principles. So in this case, two of the widely used principles or methods are energy principles and weighted residual methods. Using these methods, you can construct a weak form or you can convert a strong form to a weak form. And this is generally an integral equation and it requires a weaker continuity on field variables. So these things will be more clear when, once we go through the examples. So Hamilton principle is, is a simple yet powerful tool that can convert your strong form to a weak form and you can derive discretized, discretized dynamic system of equations. In mathematical terms, it states that of all the admissible time histories of the displacement, the most accurate solution makes the Lagrangian function a minimum. So I will show you how to construct a Lagrangian functional for our case later on. But just assume it's a function and you need to minimize it. This means you need to make it to zero value. And it says that for any small displacement disturbance or value, it should give you an accurate solution based on the minimization. But this admissible displacement must satisfy some conditions. And one of them is the called the compatibility equation. So this means it should be compatible with your Lagrangian function in a geometry domain. It should satisfy all the essential and kinematic boundary condition. By essential, it means you're applying forces on the system. And by kinematic, it means you're applying displacements on the system as a boundary conditions. And it should also satisfy the conditions at initial and final time. So mathematically, you can say that if I know the h function, then the variation of h, which is denoted by a small delta here, times dt should be equal to 0, as per the mathematical principle. So 
So since now we know the mathematical equation for Hamilton's principle, which is the variation of h times dt in the integral form equals to zero. Now the question is how I define the Lagrangian function. So in our case, we have a force which is applied as a boundary condition and we have some displacements caused by that. So this force and displacement will cause different types of energy in the system. One is the strain energy of the system, which is elastic strain energy in this case. The second one is the kinetic energy of the system because your force can displace your object. <clears throat> and the third one is the external work done by the external forces if there are any. <clears throat> so my Lagrangian function will be of this kind of form as shown in the slide here. And it is the kinetic energy minus the potential energy plus the work done. So it's again based on the dynamic equilibrium of the system. And where T is the kinetic energy, pi is the potential energy in W underscore F is the work done by the external forces. So now the question is, I know my H, I know the integral equation on the top, how to define kinetic energy, potential energy or elastic strain energy, and the work done by the forces. That's what we're going to do now. So kinetic energy of any problem domain can be defined with the same principles you use in the physics, which is the kinetic energy is generally equal to half mv square, or you can say half rho v square, which is rho is the velocity density and v is the velocity times the volume. So in this case, I'm using the same analogy and I'm defining my kinetic energy in the integral form as half integral over the whole volume time and in, in, in an integral I have density times u dot which is a velocity squared and so since it's a vector in this case so we ha I have a bold symbol for that in 3d space and I have to multiply it to get a square of those well potential energy in our case is elastic strain energy and this can be defined by again fundamental physics law which this means my potential energy, which is elastic strain energy, equals to half of the strain times the stress. So it's the area under the stress strain curve. And, and if I'm doing this for a small volume or a small element, then I can take an integral over the whole volume, and this will give me the total elastic strain energy. What I do in this case is, when I replace my sigma, which is a stress, with the constitutive relation C times E, and then my strain energy in 3d context becomes like this in a 1d case it's a simple thing because my strain my constitutive relation c they are all scalar quantities so i just need to multiply three quantities together work done by any force can be computed in the symbol physics ruled again force time displacement will give me the work done so in this case we can have different combination of forces so we can have body forces and we can have surface forces fs so if i multiply these forces with the displacement vector then i and then integrate over the whole volume of the domain then i will get the total work done by these forces where sf is the surface force again i will give you the express relationship for all these things later on once you move towards the truss element formulation and in that case it's simple because you will have only one quantity involved in the majority of the cases but these equations are generally valid for all different whether domains or dimensions for example if you have a 1d problem 2d problem or a 3d problem